Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and I know the title is a bit strange race or smoke yourself to death but I think it's a boy's dream to become a race driver and it doesn't really matter how old the boy is it is still a dream and for many of us it remains a dream where it doesn't have to be a dream you can actually do it in a affordable way and this is what this video is all about. And lucky for us, there are two types of racing. There is the competitive racing and the non-competitive racing. The competitive racing requires you to hold a racing license issued by your national authority and approved by the FIA. They come in different types, national, international, and then for the different classes within each, within each discipline. This can be quite expensive because there is a lot of rules and regulations that you need to adhere to and there's a lot of preconditions and pre-requirements that you need to meet before you can actually get the license. You just can't get an F1 racing license if you never raced before. So that may all be out of scope for this moment in time. So therefore, we might start to look at the non-competitive racing. Now, when I say non-competitive racing, it means that we go into race on the racetrack with other pilots on the track, but we are not going to compete with them. There is no winner, there is no prize, there is nothing. There is no start sign as such. Everybody gets on the track at a certain time and you do your laps on your own. But you do race with yourself. You put yourself to the limit. You put your car to the limit. So it is still full proper racing in that aspect. But again, it is not competitive. And that is very affordable. There is no requirement for a racing license, but you have to hold normally a normal license for a normal road car, unless there are some exceptions. And typically you can start doing this as of the age of 16. It all depends a little bit where you live and what type of track regulations are in place. So now that we can participate in a track day, we're going to need a car. Now, there's a couple of options. You can get your own car on the track, and there's a lot of pros and cons, and we'll talk about this in a second. Or you can get a proper race car and you buy one, and we'll also look on that. Or uh, you just decide to rent one. Now, renting one is quite expensive. Buying a race car for yourself uh, is an investment, uh, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna do this for a couple of years, it may be the cheapest solution. And of course, driving your daily uh, car uh, on the track uh, is also possible, but to be very honest, you're not gonna get the performance out of it. You're gonna have a high risk, and you know it's gonna cost you a lot of money for the adaptations. You're gonna run into MOT problems, and I'll talk about this in a few minutes, uh, why that is not, in my opinion, a good approach. But okay, everybody is free to decide whatever they feel the best approach for them. But these are the three alternatives that you do have. So if you decide to take your daily driver to the racetrack, then you have to be aware of the fact that you're responsible for your own car. In fact, you will sign a piece of paper that you will not claim money to anybody else on the track when they hit you, even if they are at fault, and that they cannot charge you any money as well from you. So you're really running on your own without an insurance. You're responsible for yourself. All the damage that is caused is all for yourself. Uh, and you only pay, of course, the damage on your own car, not to the other car. So that's very important to understand. If you damage the track itself, then of course you will have to pay for the track damage. Now, a daily driver is really not conditioned to drive on the racetrack. The suspension isn't right, the brakes are not right, there's a lot of things that are not suitable for a racetrack. You have typically no roll cage, you have no fire suppression system. So all by all, a daily driver is not all that good on a racetrack, unless of course you modify your daily driver and you put the proper modifications in, you put the proper tires on each time you go to the racetrack, but if you put those modifications on your daily driver, you guarantee you are going to get a problem with the MOT. They don't like this and they will actually don't allow you to do so, unless you have a certificate that allows you to do so. But that's a lot of paperwork. 
So keep that in mind. And also you're going to wear out your car very quickly on the track. And this is probably something you don't want to do. And in fact, if you modify your suspension to make it very stiff for the track, then it's going to become a very uncomfortable car to drive it daily. So there's a decision to be made. So in my opinion, yes, use your daily driver once just to get the experience on a track day. But then after that, it's probably better to buy a race car. And now that we decided to buy a race car, it's important to figure out what type of car you want to use. Do we want to go for open wheels? And if we go for open wheels like this one, do we want to go for a modern open wheels car or a very classic one? Now, this is a classic one. This is about 30 years old. So that all depends on your specific taste. And keep in mind that if you go into track days uh, organized by a club, then typically they will class you in certain groups, in certain classes. So the open wheels will not drive with the GTs, for instance, and the modern cars of today with lots of horsepower will not compete, well, I shouldn't say compete, will not drive with the older classic cars, even if they are GTs like MGB GTs. So that is not going to happen unless it's a completely open uh, race track day but then even then the open wheels will won't be allowed with the other cars that's typically how it goes so for you it's important to figure out what kind of a car do you want to race with and i have to admit the mono volumes like this one here are so much fun but regardless of that whatever you decide to buy there's a few things you should consider Whatever race car you decided to buy, buy something which is simple. Buy something that has no fancy electronics on it, that has no stabilization programs on it, like ESP and ABS and all that. Because this is not what you need on the racetrack. You should turn all that off anyway if you go to a racetrack. When I want to say a simple car, I, I mean a car that is maybe with a carburetor that has a very simple engine that is easily to maintain like an MGB GT, like a TR6, like the classic Mini. There's plenty of cars around today that you can actually get, even classic cars that have been used in competitive races before and now are available on the market for us uh, novice uh, racers on track days. It's going to save you a lot of money, believe me, uh, because these parts, like for an MGB GT, are fairly cheap and available in abundance. And that is true for many, many um, classic cars, but also fairly recent cars. So don't go for the super duper cars. It, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. And at the end of the day, it's all about the fun of you competing yourself with your car to the limits of the car and yourself on the track. That's what a track day is all about. And you want to do this in a safe way. So now that you decided to buy a race car and you want to go for a simple and easy to maintain race car, you need to decide if you want to buy one which is fully ready and in a very good condition or do you want to buy one which has a bit of work to it or do you want to buy one that has a lot of work to it but be aware that some of the race cars that you will find are like street cars that somebody modified in his back garage and they are not really uh, prepared properly be aware of those and I'll come back to this in a few minutes once we start talking about the things you should look for when you buy a race car for your track days. Now you should be able to get a decent classic race car, be it an MGB GT or TR6 or a Mini or whatever, for about 14 to 20,000 euros. And then 20,000 is already a lot of money. And that gives you a pretty good uh, race car to start with, so you can take it to the track base almost immediately with a little bit of work. If you're going for a race car, a classic race car, that would be, which has more work to it, uh, probably count around 10,000 euros. And if you go for one which has a lot of work on it, then you probably could get it for about six to 7,000 euros. And I've done this with one of my race cars, and you might remember the red uh, Formula Kuning. Uh, which is now a blue one, I'll show you that in a few seconds. That I started off with 6,000 euros and I spent another 4,000 on it and lots of time and then finally I got it to the state it's in now. So it all depends how technically and mechanically savvy you are and how much work you want to spend on it. The real question is, do you want to be the driver, the mechanic and the sponsor at the same time? You have to keep that in mind.
Just to give you an example, I bought this Koenig race car uh, this summer for 7,000 euros, which is not a lot of money. It is complete and it came with a whole bunch of parts. Now, of course, this car is not in a tip-top condition and you shouldn't take it to the track right away. That would be a major mistake, even on a track day. Wow. You really need to take it apart, look at all the parts, inspect it, look for cracks, look for things that are worn out and then replace all these parts, especially the brakes because brakes are critical. So rebuilding the brakes is always a good effort to do. You may be even putting up new brake cylinders and new brake hoses. And I've done this before on a very similar car. Uh, this was my blue one and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes and you'll see uh, how you can actually, uh, with a little bit of work, convert the car from a rundown car, really, to a pretty good racing car uh, with a little bit of work and a little bit of money. So if you spend about 7,000 euros on a buying a car like this, add another three to 4,000 to it, and then you're going to have it in a very nice condition, a car you can trust on the track. Because the last thing you want to do is go into a racetrack and then sitting on the side, on the paddock or in the pit, working on your car because you did not prepare your car properly. And if you buy in the second-hand race cars, they typically come with a whole bunch of spares. And that was also the case for both my Koenig race cars. I have a whole bunch of wrist bones and suspension parts. You got engine parts, all kind of stuff. I'm not saying everything is usable, but if you're buying a race car from somebody on a race car that has been on the track before, this is the kind of stuff you should find. If there's nothing with it, then probably this is a newly built race car or kind of a fake built race car, and I would probably stay clear of that one. You're going to need a couple of spare race tires or rims, and it doesn't really matter if those are slicks or semi-slicks, but you should have those with you whenever you go to the racetrack so you can swap out that wheel very quickly. And the last thing you want to do is burn your track time in the pit or in the paddock because you don't have a spare tire with you and you have to look for somebody who has one. Not the kind of thing you want to do. But besides the fact that you may have six slicks or semi-slicks and you're going to need a set of rain tires. Race tires are fairly expensive and it all depends on the size that you have on your car and what type of compound you use. Uh, but they run you easily about 1500 euros for a complete set on your car. Now, I don't buy those because for track days I don't need new tires every time. To be very honest, uh, you can do probably about six track days with one set of tires. Uh, it all depends of course how you drive, what kind of a car you have. But I'm buying my um, tires from uh, pros. Uh, I mean, you know, pros, they drive their cars for one race and the tires go off. And then you can buy those and easily uh, you can buy like 14 tires for three, 400 euros. That's what I did with the lot that you still see here. And I'm already using those on my race cars. So that is a other approach to get some cheaper tires and not spending too much money. So there's always a solution to anything to save on money. But be careful, don't buy secondhand tires that are too old because then the compound becomes too hard and the compound of the tire has to stick to the tarmac and if it's old then it won't do that anymore. So don't go for tires that are like three, four years old because that is not going to give you the right effect once you get them on the track. There are no real strict rules on a track day of what kind of safety kit you should have in your car, but I do believe that you should have a proper racing seat. Together with proper seat belts, and they don't need to uh, be valid anymore, they should be FIA approved, but the expiration date can be expired uh, as long as they're in a good condition. And I would also say that a proper installed roll cage is absolutely necessary for your own safety. Now I know a lot of people are racing on the track with their own car without actually a roll bar or all this protection mechanism. But to be very honest, uh, I think that is a high risk they take. During a track day, not everybody is really, to be honest, a qualified driver. A lot of people think they can drive, but they cannot drive. Um, but 
still they believe they can and they go crazy on the track and um, accidents are not uncommon think about the nuremberg rink and there's plenty of videos on youtube how you can see how people really um damage their cars and also cars from others so to be safe it's always better to have your car fitted with the proper safety equipment and if you buy a race car that will be in there if you're driving your own car you won't have any of that or most likely not and if you do have it then you will have certainly a problem on the mot unless you have that special certificate so um now let me show you something else which is i think extremely important but not a requirement to drive on the track day which is your fire prevention system having a having a fire extinguisher is an absolute must in your race car and make sure that it's up to date i know they don't demand anything like this uh, on the track day but you know if i see people on the track with their normal daily user cars that have their extinguisher in the back trunk man if something happens you're not going to get to it in time that's why in a normal race car you actually have the fire extinguisher within hand position from the driver so you can easily flip it open and then use it make sure that the date is still up to date but also um, it's even better to have a automatic um, fire extinguisher system which is then tubed to the engine compartment and the foot wells and the cockpit and up on an impact then you basically can um, activate this quite automatically either by pulling a handle or by actually automatically by flipping a switch or so uh, this is a manual one and that will do the job i probably will upgrade on my other hauke race car i actually do have a full automatic system and a fire happens very quickly especially after an accident so you have to have an emergency ch shut off which is this handle right here on the outside and on the inside so you can cut the battery off completely again this is not a requirement for a track day but it's all about safety so you better have a race car that has this this is another reason why a normal road car is not really suitable for track days and of course that is my opinion you may be of a different opinion the nice thing about the track day is that you don't have any limitations on your engine in other words uh, you can modify the engine the way you want so you don't have the FIA and XK limitations of what you can do to your engine depending on which class you would actually drive in competition sport now on a track day there are no classes really although they may uh, put you in different groups but they are not really classes as such so that means you can modify the engine the way you want to modify it now of course uh, if you're going to start with track days later on you might decide to get into competition so why not keeping your car in accordance with the annex k of the fia in terms of your ignition in terms of your carburetors and the changes to the engine block but also to your suspension and your brakes and so on so it's better to stick to the annex k for your possible future class you want to race in outside the track days this is the same race car as you have seen in the barn except the engine is slightly different on this one and it's been completely restored And rebuilding this race car is, I would say, half of the fun. And it took me about four months to complete this. But at the end, I had a very well and proper race car that I could trust and put on the track. But uh, all by all, this was really a lot of fun. See here, I'm on the straight stretch again. And um, I'm not even near the real red line because that's 15,000 RPM on this car. And you do this restoration not only for the looks, but you actually do it for the safety of yourself and the car and the others on the track. If you're going to buy a race car, even for track days, you might want to ask for its history. And if it doesn't have any history, then it's most likely a car that never took part in a race and you should probably not be buying it. It's probably something that somebody built in his own garage. Now, uh, you should ask for a dyno test and typically they should have that if it ever participated in races as you can see here but you can also ask for different um, car passes of different sorts uh, of your specific car and then uh, more technical details you could ask for all the competitions it's been in and i have here a whole list of competitions the car participated in of course you might not need all these but you should have some and look how many i have here that's a lot of competition races this car has participated in 
It's probably also a sign that it's been uh, used quite a bit. And you can actually find it. Uh, this My car is car 99 and it wasn't really on the top, but it could be the driver, right? So here you see it. If I flip through this, I have in the back a lot of bills and other uh, costs that have been made on this car. So all by all, this is the kind of file you really want to see if you're buying really a race car from someone. That will make sure that you have a proper race car that has participated in races. And even if you're going to sell it afterwards, it has more value. It, if it doesn't have anything, then I wouldn't really buy the car. Now, if the car has a FIA passport, which this one doesn't, that is really great. And uh, really, if you have the chance, buy a car like that. Now that you have a race car and it's all prepared, you can now participate in a track day. Now, there's a couple of options for you here. You either join a club uh, of a specific brand, and this clubs for races, uh, track days, for Miatas, for Lotus, for classic cars, for Formula Ford. There's all kind of clubs around. And just look for the one that fits your specific race car. If you have a GT, go to a GT race club. Maybe you even have a Porsche, they go to a Porsche race club. They do exist and they do organize track days in a very well organized manner. Um, they're not going to put all the cars together. They're going to put it in groups. So the more modern cars, the high power cars, the less powerful cars, you know, all that kind of stuff. The open wheel cars, they will be put all together. Now, I belong to a racing club called the Crack and uh, they organize this very well. They organize track days, they rent the track, and then you can participate. If you are a member of a race club, then you get a deduction on your track cost, because you have to pay for the track. And typically, a track runs you between 150 and 200 euros if you are a member of a club. If you are not a member of a club, then you may end up with 300 and 200, whatever that range will be. But typically, it's about the double. So it's certainly worthwhile to be a member of a race club. Now, open track days uh, were not organized really by a club. Uh, where everybody can get on the track, then you will see a big mix of cars uh, on the track itself. Fast cars, slow cars, well-educated drivers, non-educated drivers. It really becomes a bit a mess, and I don't like it too much. But with club track days that's quite different and they will also limit the amount of cars on the track and so on now there are not a lot of conditions and regulations for you to get on the track um, but some clubs do demand certain specifics now if you're going to race on a track with an open wheel race car you're going to have to have a helmet and you have to have a racing coverall the long johns you know, the fireproof socks and um, shirt, all kind of stuff. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. And this is kind of stuff I think you should buy anyway, no matter with what you race and no matter what the regulation says. I've seen people on racetracks, on track days, driving their nice Porsches and Corvettes, road cars. Man, they have no gloves on, no protection whatsoever. I think it's insane to do that. I, they drive around in their shorts and t-shirts. I don't get it. So I recommend not to do that. You're much better off to buy a complete outfit. And you can get a complete brand new outfit. Helmet, mask, gloves, fireproof underwear, coverall, racing shoes. All that for about 2,000 euros. And it's brand new. Now, the good thing about racing on a track day is that none of that stuff has to be valid anymore. You can buy a brand new race uh, suit uh, in a store which the date is expired. And you know, in official races, uh, there is an expire date on all your clothing, uh, but not on, on track days, that doesn't apply. So if you buy that kind of coverall or race uh, overall, then you have a good quality overall, which is FIA compliant, but it's expired, but it was never used. So that is more than good enough for a track day. So I'm going to show you that in a few minutes, what all this stuff is about and what you should look for. Now, on the other hand, you can also buy secondhand uh, race clothing because those professionals, they will race for a while with it and they change it and they sell it. So you might want to buy that. The thing I would never buy secondhand is a helmet. This is something I would always buy uh, new. But 
that is me. So if you participate in a track day organized by a club, you're typically going to get like four times half an hour of racing. And believe me, uh, that is more than enough in a day because you will be sweating to death and, and you will be really tired at the end of the day because it is very demanding physically and mentally. Now, of course, that all depends a bit on you on how fast and how far you want to push yourself onto your own personal race. So you don't compete again with the others, but you compete potentially with yourself. What we haven't talked about is the cost that you will have to take your race car to the track. Now, of course, if you're taking your daily driver to the track, you just drive up to the track location. But if you have a race car, then you cannot drive your race car over the public roads. So you will need a trailer of some sort. So you would have to buy a trailer. Now, trailers, uh, they range in price. Again, you can have a second-hand one for about 2,000 euros. Uh, but a new one will probably run you around four to five thousand and that is not a covered trailer at all uh, If you can afford a covered trailer, then you're probably ending up about ten thousand euros That would probably get you already a quite decent trailer Now I'm not saying you have to do that But an ordinary trailer will actually do for you much depending on what type of race car you have how heavy it is now assuming that you have your race kit as an absolute minimum for track days you should really get a helmet and i always recommend a helmet actually with a visor and if you can afford it even with a um, microphone inside so you can communicate with your passenger if you have one i also think that as a minimum you should have a racing coverall and if you do buy a racing coverall, you might want to go for a FIA-approved racing coverall. Now, this specific one, as I mentioned before, is a brand new one that I bought uh, some time ago. Uh, but the year of manufacturing was 2018, so it was left in the store. That means they only last for five years, basically. So this is almost expired. So that's why you can buy these coveralls for a very good price. And the other two minimum things you should have when you think about racing is proper racing gloves and actually racing shoes, as you can see here, because they give you a very good feeling on the pedals. And uh, that is a lot better. You shouldn't be driving with boots on or something like that. And the, the gloves uh, protect you as well uh, on your hands in case of an accident. But also they give you good grip on the steering wheel. So these are the minimum things, a helmet, a race coverall, racing shoes and racing gloves. I think everybody should wear that. It's not uh, obliged to have this. The helmet is, I believe, in certain track days, but the rest, most of the time, you don't have to have, but I do recommend that you do wear this. You can see that even the gloves, they have uh, approval and homologation numbers from FIA. And that's important uh, that you actually buy all the stuff that is homologated. Again, it's not mandatory for track days, but you know how it goes. Eventually, you're going to go to real competition races. Um, track days are great, but it's going to bite you and you want to race later on. And if you buy the right stuff from the start, why not? And you actually can see that there is a valid or validation number. And this year is 2032 on this specific case. So uh, after 2032... You can't wear those anymore. So gloves, they typically last a long time. You know, I'm one of those guys that is rather be safe than sorry. So I always wear fireproof uh, underwear, so fireproof socks. This is my long john. This is my shirt. And then here I have my um, mask that uh, goes inside my helmet. And, you know, all these things, as you can see, they all have very specific dates and seals on them. So, you know, this is original stuff. This stuff lasts another 10 years typically, so not too bad. Um, I know you don't need to wear this, but again, it depends on what kind of class you're going to drive. And I shouldn't really say class, but what kind of type of car you drive. I'm driving always um, open wheels, monocoque cars, and uh, there you actually sit on the gas tank. And um, yeah, you want to be safe uh, because it doesn't take a lot to have that gas tank uh, ruptured and ignited uh, in case of an accident. So with this stuff, you're a little bit protected. Now it's time actually to go and actually go to the racetrack and participate in the track day. Now, before you do so, uh, you should prepare your car. Now that takes about four hours to prepare your car properly. That means checking out all the bolts, all the connections, 
the state of all the components on the car, the wear and tear, making sure that the tires are good, the tire pressure is good, making sure you've got fresh oil in it, that the spark plugs are potentially new, that the filters are cleaned out, yeah, that's that good. everything is ready to go and aligned properly. If you're not technically savvy, then this is gonna cost you some money. So consider that if you don't have mechanical skills, and you can learn those, it's gonna cost you some extra money, probably around two to 300 euros, just to get your car ready to go. It's good practice to take some lessons before you go into your first track day. And I know, I know, we all think we can drive, but reality is you will be really, really surprised once you get on the track with a professional what you need to know about the lines, where to brake, how to take your apex, very important stuff. And there are schools available for this and they are not very expensive. You can get some rookie training, that's more than good enough. An hour, two hours on the track and you will be so comfortable. The other thing you should probably try to do is to get to know the track, the layout, before you actually get onto the track. And there's plenty of layouts available on the internet, so that should not be any issue. Now, once your car is ready to go, now we're getting actually to the track itself. Once you arrive on the track, you will probably get a briefing, a little explanation on the flags and how you will be racing and what group you will belong and so on. And then actually the big moment is starting for you. You do your first track day and I bet you, you will enjoy it. It is an experience that only people that have done it can talk about. Now, once the track day is over, you've got to take the car back home. Uh, you probably spend some fuel driving up and down to the racetrack. And you might have stayed overnight because sometimes the racetracks are some distance away. And once you get home, then you have to prepare the car again. So, you know, if you participate like six times a year in a track day, then you change six times a year the oil and maybe the spark plugs and the filters and whatever you have on your car. And your tires, of course, they will wear out. So it doesn't really matter if you have slicks or semi-slicks, um, you will have to change them. So, so far we have talked about a lot of things and you probably now wonder, now what is the total cost if I wanna do track days with my own race car? And I'm gonna use the example of your own race car because I think that's the safest way to race and the best way to race. Because at the end of the day, uh, you are the driver, you are the mechanic and you are the sponsor all in one person. So you do everything yourself, unless you're gonna get a crew of course, and then it's gonna be far more expensive. Now, uh, there is an investment to be done uh, and that is the race car itself and the trailer. So a race car, well, let's say when, after you fixed it all up and, or you bought a good conditioned one, let's say 14,000 euros, which I think is a medium price you add to that 2,000 euros for your racing kit, so your helmet and your underwear and your coveralls and all that, and the gloves and the shoes. Um, and assuming that is all new and 2,000 euros is a reasonable price. And then um, you need to add your trailer, let's say 4,000 euros in case you already have one, it's different. So you really, for 20,000 euros, you are really set with your initial investment uh, for the race car. And that's a one-time investment. It doesn't, you don't need to do it all over again. So over a couple of years, if you're planning to race for a couple of years, that pays back. And in fact, even if you sell your race car afterwards, if you select the right one, it's going to be worth some money as well. So it's not lost money. And then we have the reoccurring costs, the normal running costs of your race car. Well, those are not that expensive either. So let's assume you go six times a year to the racetrack and you pay six times a year 200 euros uh, for admission to the track. And, and sometimes it's less, sometimes it's a bit more. So that is 1,200 euros. You then burn about 50 euros of fuel, that's 300. And then you have your transport to it and you transport back, maybe you stay overnight. So let's add another 600 to that. And then finally, um, you have your normal running costs on your uh, engine oil, your spark plugs and all that. So let's say you do six times a year, you're changing your brake pads, which is a hell of a lot. And one times a year, you change your tires. And then, you know, all that is gonna end up probably to another 1,500 euros. So all by all, you probably get by by roughly about 3,500 to 4,000 euros a year 
for six races, and I have been exaggerating a little bit on the prices here, that may sound a lot of money, but think about it. A packet of cigarettes is 10 euros. That's 300 euros a month. In a year, that is 3,600 euros, nearly to 4,000 euros, if you only smoke one packet a day. Your racing fun, it's the same price. So give up smoking and race. It's better for you, and it's even safer and more healthy. So I think racing um, on the racetrack, on um, Track days is very affordable, even with a race car. 